Well, while Prime Minister Anthony Albanese confirmed last week that he will visit China later this year in a continued bid to normalise relations, the Australian Navy began war games off the coast of Sydney on Friday alongside sailors from the US, Japan and India. Now, Mike Gallagher, one of the most influential congressmen in Washington and chair of the House Committee on China, recently told an Australia-America leadership dialogue that the risk of war with China was increasing. This will be news to most Australians who are being led to believe that relations with China are being repaired. Joining me to discuss what all this means is Dr Malcolm Davis, who's a senior analyst at the Australian Strategic Policy uh, Institute. Uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, Gallagher, as I said, uh, has uh, made the claim that to prevent war in the Indo-Pacific, AUKUS must adopt a war footing. Uh, is he right? And is Australia on a war footing? Well, thanks for having me. He is definitely correct. We do need to adopt a war footing. Uh, we are not on that war footing at this point in time. Uh, the Defence Strategic Review indicated a serious and deteriorating strategic environment in our neighbourhood, uh, with the key threat being the rise of China and, in particular, the challenge it poses to Taiwan. But the government has yet to actually respond to that threat in a fast and, and meaningful way in terms of acquiring capabilities or changing force posture. So we're not in a war footing yet, but we need to be. One of the things that the congressman said is that the likelihood of war within the next five years is very real. He talked about the fact that uh, Xi Jinping has spoken openly about his desire to take Taiwan by force. He makes the claim when a dictator speaks, you should listen to what he says and believe him. He also talks about the fact that Xi Jinping is getting older and in his bid to be the modern day Mao, uh, that he needs to take action soon. Do you think that's realistic? I mean, that's pretty amazing that we could be at war in the next five years, or is that a little bit shrill? Look, I generally uh, adopt the approach that uh, the risks of war go, go up dramatically in the second half of this decade and into the first few years of the next decade. So the next 10 years really are a period of great risk. And I think that Gallagher's assessment is correct. Uh, Xi Jinping does feel that he needs to impose unification on the Taiwanese people against their wishes because the vast majority of the Taiwanese people want the status quo. They do not want to declare de jure independence. They don't want unification with China under Chinese Communist Party rule. They want the status quo. And that's unacceptable to Xi Jinping. So he's going to have to move very quickly. And I think the, the period of risk goes up from the second half of this decade onwards through to about 2033, 10 years out. So, Malcolm, talk to me about what this means for our government, because on the one hand, the Albanese government is seeking to normalise relations with China. That's very important for trade. But at the same time, if war is a possibility in the near future, they've got to keep the public updated, don't they? Because you don't want to suddenly surprise the public and call for all sorts of drastic action and sacrifices if the public are thinking everything's, you know, A-OK. -okay. Well, firstly, if, if war does happen, if China does invade Taiwan, then trade grinds to a halt. Uh, that's very clear. We will not be trading anything with China if there's war, uh, particularly if we're involved in that war. Uh, secondly, there does need to be a national debate on this issue. It's an important issue. It's a serious issue. It's not something that is you know, out there on far left field. This is a serious strategic policy issue, uh, which will be informing and driving our defence policy and our force posture and our capability development in the coming years. And the government does need to address this to the nation and get the people to understand why we may need to dramatically increase defence spending in coming years in order to prepare for this contingency, because if we don't, then we're going to be caught flat-footed and, and it will not be a good day for this country. Gallagher makes the point that most Western leaders are afraid, terrified, I think he said, to uh, confront the reality of what we're facing and to talk to the public about it. Do you agree with that assessment? And, and why is it that Western leaders would be afraid to talk about this? Yes, I, I think that's correct. Uh, we are, after, talking, uh, after all, talking about you know, a serious military conflict uh, far, on a far greater scope, scope and scale than in comparison to, for example, the 1991 Persian Gulf War. You know, the potential for a protracted war lasting uh, months in our neighbourhood at a very high intensity, potential for attacks on this country, uh, including Australian bases in the north of Australia, 
uh, the requirement for this country to be able to sustain military operations at a high intensity over a period of months, risk obviously of, of escalation into the nuclear threshold. All of these things are you know, serious issues. And it's no wonder that government is terrified of talking about it, but they have a responsibility uh, to talk about it because the defence of the country is their most important responsibility. Well, Malcolm, speaking of talk, there's talk that the Albanese government wants to expand the Parliamentary Joint Committee on Intelligence and Security beyond the government and opposition to include a crossbench MP. Now, that sounds nice, but is that smart? Do we really want a member of the Greens on a committee like that? Look, I think you know, if they're going to do that, then all members of Parliament need to take the responsibility of national security very seriously. Um, I think that you cannot afford to allow a situation emerge where a minor party seeks to politicise an issue and maybe exploit it for their own uh, party agenda. So I would be urging caution uh, to do that. I think that really uh, the issue of defence and national security needs to be maintained within the two major parties. And obviously, you know, minor parties like the Greens do need to be consulted and, and briefed. Uh, but I don't think they should be given veto power over uh, defence and national security policy. I've got time to ask you just one more question. I wanted to ask about uh, the government's decision last week to cave into an Indigenous group that opposed a nuclear waste dump in South Australia. Now, this dump was for low-level medical waste. But I want to ask you, what does that capitulation say about the government's ability to make the hard decisions? We're going to need more nuclear waste dumps as we pursue nuclear submarines. Um, it doesn't inspire a great deal of confidence that this government has any backbone, does it? Well, look, uh, the issue of nuclear submarines is a longer-term one. Uh, we won't be getting the first of the Virginia-class uh, nuclear submarines from the US until 2033, uh, and we'll be getting three, potentially five of those, and then switching to the SSN AUKUS boats, which will be made in the UK. So in terms of actually disposing of the waste, what we're talking about is disposing of the reactor uh, at the end of the submarine's uh, service life. You don't actually... Those submarines don't produce any waste whilst they're in service. So we are talking decades into the future, and I think that whichever government is in power, say, in the 2050s or the 2060s, uh, does need to actually have a serious plan for how they're going to store that radioactive waste. They can't afford to leave it till the last minute.